we define the aim for the matlab program 2 that it is to perform the spectral analysis of a sum of two sinusoidal signals using the dft here so as we require here the two sinusoidal signals first of all generated then the summation of these two signals and finally the spectral analysis here so for generation of the two sinusoidal signals we shall accept certain input parameters from the command window so that this particular programming will be user friendly here so i just mention a comment for this particular block generation of input signals or input information is to be accepted from the command window here so for that purpose as we require first of all for the display purpose especially and to deal with in how much time this matlab software will respond you you should have a limit on the signal length here so signal length here we are going to accept to a symbol that is denoted by capital l here and the value can be accepted from the command prompt by using the matlab syntax input here so writing input within a pair of parentheses and a pair of single quotes i shall be mentioning here input the signal length so whatever the value we shall be providing as input to this particular thing here it will be assigned to capital l here next to that we shall require the dft operation for this task accomplishment here so for a dft operation the dft length should also be fixed here so that can also be accepted from the input from command window here so here we shall be having the another letter here so let us have this to be capital dl so dft length we can see here the same input keyword we are going to use here with the same syntax within a pair of parentheses and a pair of single quotes we shall be writing input dft length equal to sign and space here so we end this particular sentences with the help of semicolons to suppress the output just now here and now as we require the two sinusoidal signals the corresponding two frequencies should also be accepted from the command prompt here so the frequencies can be holded up by the array depending how many inputs you provide to it with the name small f here so small f will represent the frequency here again we make the use of input command within a pair of parentheses and a pair of single quotes we write input the sinusoidal frequencies sinusoidal frequencies so the values we need to provide in an array here now this is what the module we have used for generation of the input signal so the exact generation that 2 into if we have to deal into the discrete time domain will require the discrete time integer variable so let us have it to be by small n and it will extend from 0 to here we have the length defined by capital l here so we have l minus 1 next to that the summation of the two sinusoidal signals so let us expect that the variable x will hold the summation of the two signals or we can write it to be s also or simply sum so sum will hold the summation of the two signals here so mathematically representing let us say the first component of the first sinusoidal here it is holding the amplitude 0.5 the nature of this sinusoid let us take it by the trigonometric function sin here so 0.5 is multiplied to the sin function within the parenthesis we have to multiply to the constant pi multiply to the variable small n here 
multiplied to the frequency value so as we expect two frequency values will be provided and those will be folded into the variable f here we have to access the first value from that hence f within the parenthesis we provide one so let us have this to be the first part of the right hand side here the another component let us have it one multiplied by again the sinusoidal function by the trigonometric sine function here so within the parenthesis we have to multiply to the constant pi the value you know better 3.14 in multiplication to the variable n and in multiplication to the another frequency component so here i write f within the parenthesis the location can be accessed by providing two here so let us suppress the result of the summation with the help of the semicolon here now now the important part is to have use of dft operation so as earlier also we have been using the past competition of the dft with the help of fft syntax into the matlab environment here so let us assume that we have the frequency domain or the dft information for the signal designated by the sum here or simply capital s we can make the use fs will hold the fourier information of the same now the dft operation can be carried out over the intended s signal by having the syntax fft the input is capital s here comma the dft length so the dft length is to be accepted from the command prompt that we have already assigned it to the variable name capital dl here and further we require another discrete variable let us have it denoted by small k that starts at 0 and that ranges up to the dft length at maximum so capital dl minus 1 here so this syntax also we end with the help of semicolon now it's a part to have a display of the spectral analysis what we say so for plotting purpose either we can make the use of plot command or here it will be quite con uh, convenient to make the use of stem command as we are in the discrete domain here so i just write the syntax stem here provide the first input parameter that it is the k the discrete integer variable here then we shall be providing the input of the absolute value of the dft performed over the summation of the two sinusoids here that is holded up by the variable capital fs here next to that we can expect it into the grid form by the next line we can have labeling to both of the axes so for the first axis x so we write the syntax x label so for x label we expect the discrete integer variable k will be there next to that we have y label so for y axis we expect the information of magnitude here and simply we write the keyword magnitude ending this with the help of semicolon and providing a title to this plot that is supposed to displays with a display with the help of this stem command here so i just mentioned the use of title command within the parenthesis uh, we shall be making the use of square brackets this will hold the information we have the capital l the length of the signal so this is equal to now we shall be providing it with the information number to string nem to str or capital l here then we go for we have the another length that is of the dft here so we shall be making the use of dl symbol here so this is equal to and comma here again we are making the use of nem to str and here the input we provide the symbol dl here so here i suppose script is okay for the spectral analysis for the summation of 
two sinusoidals using the DFT operations. Uh, let us save this script by the name program underscore as we have the eighth chapter underscore the fifteenth topic here. So program underscore eight underscore fifteen dot m will be the file extension to this current folder here. You can see here the name of the program that it was untitled in the editor window it has been now with the name as we have provided as well the file has been created into the current folder here now it's time to test whether our script works finally or not so we run this particular program so after running this particular program you can see the workspace is empty whereas the command window is asking us to provide the input so it is asking us input the signal length so here we are supposed to provide the signal length so initially we keep it the value let us say for example 16 then we are asked to provide the input of DFT length also so let us keep the DFT length also by 16 and next we are asked input the sinusoidal frequencies so here we have to provide the two frequency values let us say the first frequency value is 0.22 and the second frequency value is 0.34 we complete the square bracket so the first input that we have provided here that will be provided to the symbol capital L the second value will be provided to the symbol capital DL and these two values will be assigned to capital sorry small f here so these inputs we have provided now I hit the enter so that we expect the output window so as I hit enter we have been popped up by the figure 1 here in a separate MATLAB window here I maximize the same you can see onto the horizontal axis the values of k have been plotted the markings right from 0, 5, 10 up to 15 here we have and on the vertical axis we have the plot of magnitude that ranges from 0 to 6 here so whatever the values we had provided as input here at the top you can see L value is equal to 16 whereas the DL value is also equal to 16 here so this plot is nothing but the information required into the discrete form and this is absolutely the spectral analysis for the summation of the two sinusoidal signals as we provided input to this particular program here so I just close this particular MATLAB window if I run this particular MATLAB program again so you can see it is asking the input again so let us say for this time we have 16 as input the DFT length let us increase the DFT length to its double of the previous so I just get it to the value 32 and provide the same two values so let us have 0 0.22 space 0 0.34 here as I hit enter expecting the output here so now you can see as I maximize this window on the horizontal axis again the value of k magnitude onto the vertical axis magnitude ranging from 0 to 8 here you can see many discrete components representing the amplitude levels of different values at the 12th point here x is equal to 10 y value is having the amplitude 5.505 here next to that if we go for the 25th component here you can see x is equal to 25 y is equal to 3.766 here so this is what the change as we had shifted not from the signal length but to the DFT length here we can increase the signal DFT length again so if I run it again providing the signal length 16 the DFT length now this time we keep it to 64 and we keep the same frequencies 0.22 then 0.34 here hitting the enter we get this output plot here maximizing the window so you can see here 
the magnitude again ranging from 0 to 8 so this is the highest peak here we have at x is equal to 22 the amplitude value is 7.834 whereas for x is equal to 42 we have the same amplitude 7.834 here so below that we have one more component x is equal to 41 having the amplitude 7.456 here so this way we have the spectral analysis of the sinusoidal signals while varying the dft length we can again increase the dft length keeping the signal length 16 again then the dft length i suppose it can be done 64 the sinusoidal frequencies 0 0.22 0 0.34 here closing the square bracket hitting the enter so we have all these and if we get it to more doubled here so let us say this is 16 then the dft length let us say 128 we provide as input the two sinusoidal frequencies 0 0.22 space 0 0.22 3, 4 here the closing of the square bracket and hitting enter so you can see the changes as we vary the dft length for the two sinusoidal signals here so this was our 15th topic from the chapter 8 titled applications of signal processing to learn our subject advanced digital signal processing here so i hope it is very much clear the concept as well the practice will definitely help you hands on onto the matlab environment to work with the various kind of signals here